Hello, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is John Gardner. I'm the director of Title IX and training here at ATSU. And I'm so excited to be with you here for my first Lunch and Learn today. We have a great show about video conferencing. I've only been here about three months, so I'm really excited to learn about things I can do with Zoom and, and other uh, different skills that we can learn today. I have two, uh, today with our, with our show, we have a way for you to interact with us. So whether you're watching on live stream or uh, watching on our Facebook uh, page, you can ask questions, type those in, they'll send them to me, and I'll ask them of our guests today. And so I want to welcome our two, oh, additionally, if you, watch, if you want to watch the show later or if you're really enjoying the show and would like to watch it with a friend or tell a friend about it, you can watch it on our YouTube channel at a later time as well. So with that being said, I want to welcome our two guests today. First, we have Dean Mogg. Dean is a manager in academic technologies with ITS, and I have Tabitha Sawyer. Tabitha is a coordinator of academic and clinical affairs within KCON. So welcome to the show. And Dean, I think we're going to get started with a short presentation from you. Right. And what I wanted to do is kind of talk a little bit about where we've come with video conferencing, where we're at now, and kind of maybe a little bit of where it's going in the future, some of the cool things you might not know about at this point. Um, if you've been using Zoom for a long time, some things have changed. Um, recently so it, it's a kind of a, an overview plus some hand, handy hints for everybody all right that sounds really interesting I'm, I'm excited to hear more about it all right so if we can go to the slides here um, kind of did a throwback here with uh, my title slide um, and just think about it, especially people who have been around for a while this is uh, it's kind of rocket science stuff the way that that uh, video conferencing works now I mean to think that you know 10 15 years ago thinking that you'd be able to talk to your grandma across the country with video conferencing. It, it's, it's an amazing thing, but uh, so it, it's something like it, from the old school, uh, Dick Tracy from back in the, the 50s had the, the wristwatch that he could to uh, communicate with people. And that it's to this point hasn't been that way because it originally started off with giant room-based systems to where we brought in uh, T1 lines, really expensive T1 lines. We had these big boxes, and it was in a, a one location in, in, in the Gutensohn Clinic in the basement. Uh, the, the units themselves cost about $200,000 with a grant from the Missouri Telehealth Foundation, and we could only connect with a very few people around the state and around the country. Did, did many people have this back then? Very few people had these uh, because they were so expensive. Uh, I mean, it also, besides the initial cost, it, the uh, T1 lines cost about $2,500 a month just to keep the, the lines in coming into, into uh, ATSU. Um, uh, from that, uh, we also ended up, you know, moving on to, uh, as time progressed into more internet-based things, but they were appliances. They were uh, the polycoms and the life-size appliances, and, and they were cheaper to run on a monthly basis, but they were still 7000 to $15,000 for each appliance, and, and they were also, that kind of limited the, the spaces we could do it. We had dedicated conference rooms where people uh, on campus or you know off campuses and in, in the regions and things would, would have to go to these dedicated rooms to use these appliances. Um, but now we've kind of moved a little bit past that and it, well, we're still using the internet but we're using more of a web-based conferencing type of model. Um, and, and you see some of the ones here you've probably seen around for a while. Skype, a lot of people have, have used. Um, Google Hangouts was once ATSU's big uh, video conferencing solution but they get kind of kind of flaky so we look for other Solutions, um, Adobe Connect is that little uh, spot there in, in, in the lower corner, which some other people might use if you're working with an outside firm and they want to do a video conference. Sometimes they use that, um, but Zoom is, is it has been the one that ATSU decided on. Well, I know my first uh, experience with this was when I had my, my first child was born and my dad exposed me to Skype and he said, hey, we can talk and see your kid all the time and the kid can see us. My family's in Colorado and I was like, this is 2009, and I was like, whoa, this is, <laughs> we're living in the future. What's going on here? And so, you know, but I know it's come a long way since then. Right. And uh, like I said, Zoom, we, we went through a process, and, and it, we could still connect the old legacy systems into Zoom back then. And, and so we, we looked at uh, different things with that, and the, the usage for Zoom has grown really a lot. Um, this is just the last year's usage, but uh, it's consistently over a thousand, a lot of times uh, 1,100 to 1,200 uh, calls per month. So it's, it's really used a lot. Uh, you know, we're talking between the Mesa campus and the Kirksville campus, but in the St. Louis Clinic, the uh, upcoming California campus, uh, and 
people in the regions all over. Uh, but also, besides the uh, the Zoom that we're using here for ATSU, um, there's you know personal ones that a lot of people are still using that are that are out there. We don't really use them so much at ATSU, but it's something if you're talking to your your grandma or your dad across the country, you have Facebook Messenger and Apple FaceTime and, and WhatsApp is another one that people a lot of people don't know about, but it, it's it's pretty wi widely used internationally. Um, I've had kids go overseas. And, and we can chat and, and call and, and video chat with them on the WhatsApp. Um, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk kind of about not just in Zoom, but you know any kind of video conferencing. Something that's really often overlooked is audio quality. Um, a lot of people have you know a video camera built into their laptop, and what they end up doing is, is using the, the the microphone based on their laptop, and there's a dog in the room and barking and. <laughs> And it seems like the audio is usually the, the biggest issue with these. Um, so we always recommend you know, having a, a USB headset. You can, um, if you don't have one, you can contact the ITS help desk and, and they'll give you one. Um, they're fairly cheap uh, or you can use, uh, you know, head, head buds, uh, earbuds. Uh, and some of them have a built-in microphone and some of them are, are wireless Bluetooth like the ones in the picture here. And if you need a camera too, you can get that from ITS as well. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, the help. If you talk to the support desk on either campus, they can get you set up with a, a headphone and a, and a webcam if you don't have one built in. If you're on a desktop. Great. Um, and, and the other thing with uh, Zoom as well. I mean, there is the, the ability to use it m with mobile devices, to where if you have an iPad or a phone or something like that, or even just a telephone, uh, you can use that to, to call in to Zoom calls. Uh, so other things uh, to think about in with um, audio uh, is mute when you're not talking because people don't want to hear you munching on your potato chips. They don't want to <laughs> hear you pound on your keyboard um, or run a, a chainsaw. Uh, <laughs> you want to kind of keep it, keep your audio muted when you're not talking. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the settings here later for your audio. Uh, another thing to consider is connections and connection speeds with when you're working with Zoom. Um, it's always best if you're on campus, especially, uh, to hook into the ATSU network with a wired connection. Um, Wi-Fi works, but usually if we're doing something important on campus, we don't trust it as much. It, 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 sometimes you'll have dropouts and things like that, especially if you're moving from place to place mm. uh, on campus and you drop from one wireless hotspot to, an, to another, a lot of times it'll, it'll break your connection. Uh, and especially, like, if we have people a lot of times that travel, and, and go to a hotel and get onto a hotel's Wi-Fi, and it's usually terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's, I had to be blunt, it, it sucks. So uh, <laughs> a lot of times when people are doing that, what they can end up doing is turning off their video and, and just using audio, or the, they can use the, uh, a telephone number and, and just dial in on a, on a phone call into the Zoom call too. Um, for mobile devices with 4G cell signal, it, can work, but you just need to make sure that you watch your, your data limits on that. Uh, the video calls are a data hog. They really like to um, to use as much data as you'll give them. So if you have a limits on your cell plan, you might want to watch using 4G and, and try to default to either Wi-Fi or a wired connection if you can. And kind of circling back around, we there is now wearable phone apps, where, uh, wearable uh, watch apps where you can do video conferencing on a watch just like Dick Tracy did 50 years ago. <laughs> so um, it's, it's coming around in, in a full circle now. Cool. Very good. Thanks. Uh, appreciate that, Dean. That was very informative. Uh, gives us sort of a baseline to go from. Um, so one of, the re one of the things I see a lot in my work is that we, we use these a lot in staff meetings and other type of meeting settings. So Tabitha, I wonder if you could just talk to us about how uh, you see Zoom being used in KCOM and in, in, in your setting. Sure. So KCOM students in their third year, they go out to our region sites all across the country. We have about 30 sites and at those locations we have a rotation site coordinator and a director of student medical education. So we meet with the coordinators and the deans meet monthly via Zoom and it's a great way to interact with people, share information, we share the screen and can show them where to find documents and forms and things like that, share our portal page that has a ton of information so it's real handy to be able to 
actually go in and click on the different things and show them how to get to um, forms and such. And um, our deans meet in the evening. Um, you know, most of them either have practice or are in a, in a clinical or academic setting. And so it's easier for them to meet in the evening time. And um, Dr. Campbell usually leads those meetings and um, they find it very helpful to be able to talk through uh, situations and curriculum and different things that they deal with. Um, and it's really great to be able to see people face to face mm -hmm. because we get together one time a year typically and if someone starts after that conference that we have, then we won't see them in person for a whole nother year. Okay. So for new people coming on board, it's really great. It makes them feel part of the team, even though they're out there, kind of feel like they're by themselves sometimes. So getting together each month and seeing the other coordinators and talking through things, asking questions and, and working out some um, issues or things that they need help with is, is very helpful. So you're talking about there's sort of almost a relationship building component uh, in the setting for you. Is that, yes, am I hearing absolutely. That? So the, the coordinators and the deans, like I said, they're out at the region sites that range from California to New Jersey, Michigan to Texas, and everywhere in between. And they may be the only two people at that location that are uh, KCOM connected. And so being able to meet monthly and see the faces of the people that are doing the same thing you're doing, they're just in a different location. Can, can be very helpful and, and um, do that team building activities. Wow, that's great, that's wonderful. And you, and you talked about the ability to show files that you know you can sort of, there's so many more components than a, just sort of a normal telephone call or an email can contribute. So uh, w one of the things that I think is interesting is how uh, it's used in a teaching and learning environment. I think for maybe both of you from your different perspectives, what do we see that's happening in a classroom setting or with Canvas and what, what are some of the usages that we're seeing there? I, um, I, I can kind of take that. Uh, the, there are several uh, ATSU programs that are using Zoom to either, uh, you know, you can record, pre-record things and, and push it out through a learning management system, or you can also bring in some, a, lot, a subject matter expert from across the country. Uh, somebody from Harvard Medical School could come in and do a, a presentation. Um, uh, well, the dental schools use this a lot for, you know, between the two campuses to where you might have somebody who's a specialist on one campus present to the students on this campus. So, and we're actually moving into, uh, with the, the uh, physical therapy program is looking at an expansion to have a kind of a remote site in Tucson to oh. where it'll be pretty much two-way communication between the two. They'll have students in each location and sometimes instructor will be in one location, sometimes it'll be in another. So it's also a good way to do real-time uh, communication and, and, and education with students, but also there's the ability to do the recording on it and, and, and show that later to have it be a, um, you know, an asynchronous, right. somebody can pick it up at any point in time and, and watch it. Okay, so, well, I mean, that's, that's a lot of functionality. Is there anything else that you're seeing in KCOM or around uh, the usage of this? Sure, so the second year students, they have the um, option to go on site visits to physically go to the location where they are interested in finishing out their third and fourth year of medical school. But we also set up Zoom meetings, um, maybe in one of the breakout rooms and say we're gonna talk with the new site in California. So that dean and that coordinator in California get on the Zoom meeting. However many students are interested in going to California will come in and they'll do a face-to-face -face meeting. It's almost like a virtual tour of the site. They may not walk around the campus or anything, sure. but they still will tell them what's going on at their location, benefits to the students coming there and, and what they have to offer the students. And the students can ask them questions. It's, it's a great way to communicate. That's, that's really impressive. Dean, you, you mentioned that um, you can record the classroom, and but there's an ability to record sort of tutorials yourself pretty easily. Is that correct? Right, too? and and we have some people that use that as well. To where um, you get into a Zoom meeting, you have to have a Zoom account first. Which contact uh, your friendly people at the service <laughs> desk to, to get a Zoom Pro account if you don't have one set up. But uh, you can start a meeting by yourself. You're the, you're the only person in the meeting. Uh, you can then you can share your screen. You can record it either on your laptop locally or or to the cloud. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, the different recording options, but then you end up with a, a web video that you can put on Google Drive. Uh, if it's small enough, you can email it to people. You, you can share it through a learning management system. So it, there's a lot of different, it's very flexible. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. 
Okay. And we use it a lot for like little short video tutorials. Like if somebody asks you, how do I turn something on on my computer? You can just share your screen, click, 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 and, and start the recording, and, and then just send it to them. Okay, okay. That's, that's really, that's very, very impressive. Very, it sounds very easy. I mean, it, it sounds, it is very it sounds easy. like a simple that's process. One of the reasons we chose Zoom is because it was so much easier and, and reliable and, and a lot more bulletproof than the other ones that it was just, people pick it up very quickly. One of the things we found easy with Zoom and we preferred over previous systems that we used was the way we set up our meetings, there's no password required. The people who are joining the meeting don't have to have an account. They don't have to have a username um, or a specific login. So some people maybe who aren't quite as tech savvy as others or have a million passwords and usernames to remember, sure. you send them the link, they click on it, they're in the meeting. So that, that's been very helpful for us. Yeah, right. And you only have to have the, the Zoom account, Zoom Pro account, if you're the one setting up the meeting. Like Tabitha was saying, anybody, you can send a link to anybody and they can join in with not having a, a, Zoom, a Zoom account. Now what about, I mean, sometimes we talk about some pretty maybe secure uh, information or it might be related to uh, HIPAA information and things like that. How, does Zoom work with any, any type of security measures and things like that to ensure other people don't have access to the information? Right, and, and everybody's always concerned about uh, HIPAA and, and FERPA things with education um, and there are ways around it. Uh, Zoom does have a, a button you can click to do um, secure calls, uh, it, it runs everything over uh, through an encryption. When it does it, it slows it down just a little bit. Um, and that, that's something you do with your normal Zoom account, uh, there's just a checkbox in some of the settings, and we'll, we'll cover that in, in a little while here. Um, but another thing you can do, we have a, a separate account that you can set up for telehealth. Um, kind of going back to the original VTEL stuff we did, mm -hmm. and, and the doctor would see a patient somewhere. Um, that needs a higher level of security uh, it, it, to be in line with HIPAA. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, we do have accounts now with, uh, with Zoom and, and you have to kind of contact us and we can set you one up, but they're fully HIPAA compliant. It, does, it, it kind of erases your patient data. You don't, you know, it doesn't record the person's name. Uh, and so there's none of that out there. So it's, it's more of a, a secure one-to-one -one doctor patient okay. relationship that we can set up. And we'd have some of the people in the, some of the dental clinics that are doing that now. Okay, okay. so just. Takes a few extra steps to make sure that we're Correct. absolutely in compliance with HIPAA, which is yep. important. Now, one other thing is, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm usually in my office and it's, it's kind of one-on-one -on -one and other people maybe are in their office. What if you're in a bigger setting, like a classroom or some sort of event setting? What are the things you want to keep in mind around this? Right, and, and going back to kind of what we talked about earlier where we did have conference rooms that were set up for the old systems. A lot of those conference rooms have been switched over now to use Zoom, and, and we have kind of some special audio equipment in there to make it work. Um, Zoom and, and Skype and a lot of those are built to be best with audio when you're talking one-on-one -on -one to somebody to where you have a headset on, you, the outside noise are, is gone. But when you get in a, in a large group or a classroom, there's a lot of people talking, there's echoes, there, there's speakers, uh, it, it ends up making it a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, some of the some of the rooms we've set up already, uh, class, uh, some of the conference rooms are set up with, with you know jobber mics or, or ceiling mics that have echo cancellation in them. Uh, usually for classrooms, some classrooms are set up that way. But it's best to kind of if you want to contact us uh, through the support desk, we can work with you to make sure, especially like for special events, uh, we have a panel coming in and we want to share it with both campuses. We do a lot of that to where we bring in good cameras and make it happen. All right, very good. Well, this has been a really informative uh, kind of first section of our show. We have more to come, but we're going to take a short break, and we're going to teach you a little bit about fishing, not the type you think. Uh, and so we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes, and, and we have a lot more information about Zoom, so stay tuned in.
Hello, and welcome back to our uh, Lunch and Learn on video conferencing. My name is John Gardner. I'm with Tabitha Sawyer and Dean Mogg. And we're just talking about the various aspects of Zoom. And I'm going to turn it over to Dean. He's going to talk a little bit more about some of the details about how to set up an account, how accounts work, how to optimize your accounts. So, Dean, give us some, give us some of the, the tricks. Um, and I guess one of the things that uh, I first think of is it, there are two different types of accounts. There's the Zoom basic account. Is if you sign up on your own, you go to zoom.us and you sign up on your own, you get a basic account where it only gives you 40 minute meeting times. And so we have a lot of times have people say, "Hey, my minutes, my meetings only lasting for 40 minutes. What did you guys do to me?" <laughs> it's like, well, you need to go through AT, uh, through the ITS department, and we can set you up with a pro account. And, and I'm not saying this from personal experience, but you really definitely <laughs> want to take your time, go through ITS, get them to set you up properly, because if you don't. It's kind of a mess. I'm just saying. I heard from a friend. So, <laughs> and then you know, if, if you go to the, the Zoom.us site, uh, there's a place to uh, join a meeting or host a meeting. Um, you can download the app. There's a desktop app for both Mac and PC. Um, and if you've already got it, it, it will take you straight into it. But if you don't have it, it will run you through a quick installer to make that happen. Um, and so the the uh, the app looks something like this now. Uh, it's recently changed. Uh, it used to be more of a, a vertical up and down app, but now it's uh, kind of spread it out to a horizontal and it'll show you what your meetings are coming up. Um, there's a way to start a meeting, uh, there's ways to schedule meetings, and, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and you can schedule meetings and then you can post that to your calendar as well. Um, and I, and I think, folks, as you're watching this at home, maybe take out a pen, some paper, write down the things you think are cool, because you might forget how to do them, but at least if you know it's cool, you can then call ITS and say, hey, I, I want to do this, but I forgot how. Um, and so uh, they'll, be, they'll be glad to help you out with that. Right. And um, there are like three different ways to schedule a meeting. It, it, you, if you're attending a meeting, you just get a link. It's on a calendar. You, you show up, and, and you, you pretend like you're paying attention. and, <laughs> and uh, but if you're actually hosting the meeting, you can do it through the app. Uh, there's a place on the uh, web profile that you can set up a meeting. But it also, when I'm going to cover, somebody asked me to cover the uh, cover the uh, the browser plugin. So there is a browser plugin that you can get uh, if you go to the Chrome Web Store or the, the Firefox Web Store. And you can download a scheduler app that exists on your browser. And you can click on that and start a meeting right away or schedule a meeting. Um, there's a little Zoom uh, button okay. that shows up there. And you're, you're logged into it. And then you can click on that and, and, and schedule a meeting for the future. And it ties into your Google Calendar. Uh, and then you can invite people uh, and you can through like you normally do with a Google Calendar invite. Or you can just go ahead and, inst and start a meeting right off. So that's a, a couple. That's a, that's a nice feature. Sometimes I'm always like looking for it, and it takes me a few yeah, minutes to get the, there. Yeah, and the browser plug-in is, is, is a nice thing. Yeah. And it also ties into your Google Calendar, like I said. So you, actually, from a Google Calendar, you, you'll see that button, too. And, and you can oh, click okay. in through a Google Calendar and, and make it a, a Zoom meeting. Oh, excellent. Uh, so then while you're well, let's, you know, move around here a little bit. Um, so then we go to a meeting, you start a meeting, you, you're going to come into a, a session and you'll have somebody well, like Jean in hey here there, in the Jean. meeting. <laughs> we'll pop Jean <laughs> in without telling her. Uh, you've got, while you're in it, you, you see the controls at the bottom. You have, you know, mute and unmute. Uh, you can start the video, stop the video. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. If you're so, the, the host of the meeting, you have different controls than if you're not the host of the meeting. If you're, start, if you're in a meeting, and there's Barb, and uh, you're having trouble with sound in this situation, what, where would you go to kind of fix that? Because I, I usually have that issue. Right. And when you get in a meeting, a lot of times the first thing that will pop up while you're in a meeting, it'll say, join the meeting with audio, and it'll be maybe a little bit confusing there, but just usually you want to join the meeting with your computer audio. Okay. Uh, there are down the, in the far left corner, there are buttons and settings to change your microphone. You can use the, the built-in microphone in, the, in, the, in, your, in your, your PC. If you have a headset, it'll come up with that, okay. uh, or a web camera microphone. And there's ways to, to test your, your speaker and your microphone. Oh, there we go. 
and it'll ask you to speak and you can test your microphone as well. So it's kind of a, a neat little feature built in there to, to, so you know ahead of time whether, and it doesn't broadcast it out to everybody that, <laughs> that you're doing this, it, it's just internally for you that you know that you're doing this in a meeting. Uh, kind of the same thing with a camera, the start and stop video and you can choose your video sources. Uh, something fun you can do if you have somebody like Gene on the line, uh, there's a virtual background is a, uh, a, a thing that some people use, it's more for fun than anything else, but there, there's ways to choose virtual background. So uh, we can take Gene out of our office and uh, put her on a, a sandy beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can put her in a forest or, or, or put her by the poolside having margaritas. Uh, <laughs> you want to show, show the background? That's, so that and, 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 and what you need to do for this is have a solid color background. The, the okay. better background you can have and, and the lighting you can have, because um, right now Gene is in our studio at a, at a green screen. So I mean, you can buy green but, screens or, or something and put them in your office <laughs> behind your desk. So if you have kind of any solid color background, yep. green probably preferred, it, this, this kind of Correct. thing can work call, for you. Call facilities and have yeah. them, uh, paint one of your side of your wall green in your office. Hey, I'm on it already. Yep. And then there, if it's a different color, there's a way in here to, to pick uh, the color, the solid color. So if it's a blue, okay. like sometimes people have chroma key blue. So it's, just a, it's not a critical tool, but it's something kind of fun. Well, in Kirksville, this might help our wellness and happiness a lot right now. We've, right, we've had a yeah. lot of snow. Right, yeah, you, you just change your uh, your background to something that, that's warm and, and sunny. Right, very cool. And, and Tab, I mean, you were talking earlier about some of the tools you use in, in meetings. Right, so we use the chat feature so that uh, the coordinators can just type in a message, ask a question, you can send that to the host of the meeting or you can broadcast it to everybody. Um, and with our coordinators, they do that a lot because the coordinators uh, want to talk amongst themselves and ask questions. How do you do this? What do you do with that paperwork? Um, military students have lots of ins and outs of how they do things and how things are processed for them differently. So okay. they'll use the chat and ask questions. Um, and we, you can choose who you chat to as well, right. whether you do it with everybody or, or just to a any, certain person. Any person in the meeting, meeting you right. can chat with? Okay, yep. all right. And did you mention breakout rooms earlier? Is that something you, you all have used at all? Not within Zoom. Not within Zoom, okay. But that is a possibility to where right. you can set it up. And we, we do it sometimes with uh, groups of people. They want to have students, they, they'll separate five students in different groups in the breakout room, have work on a project, and then come back to the main room. Okay. Uh, that's a setting you have to work with it with the Google profile um, but we can if you talk to us we can certainly show you how to do that okay I imagine that would be useful in some yeah. classrooms and, and one great thing that's actually right on the meeting thing if I may expand this big enough uh, nope. there, there's lots of places to access the the, 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 uh, the support features for zoom if you don't know what's going on you can go to the zoom.us website uh, and then there's a the support tab there and there's it'll lead you there you can get it through the app it's as well and if you have a question about something you don't know you know how to start in a meeting and how to get started it gives you some of the basics and also has little um, little videos that can show you you know how, how to do things as well so they have like little uh, YouTube videos and, and to talk about some of the, the simple ways to, to work on your problem. And that search feature, if you just type in what you're interested in, it'll take you to whatever they think Correct. is the best yeah. So the if, best I, if I was looking that. for breakout rooms, managing video breakout rooms. Perfect, okay. And then it'll show me you know, how to do this with a YouTube video. Okay. So Very Zoom good. has a great uh, bit of support with their uh, support sites and, and there, there's multiple ways to get to that as well. Or you can start a support ticket with ATSU and, and we'll try to walk you through as well. Okay. Um, and one other thing I guess to mention uh, while I'm here um, with the, uh, the Zoom Help Center is Zoom does have um, training, they have weekly webinars. So where if you get set up with an account or, or maybe you, you're not very familiar with it, you can sign up for a, a webinar and Zoom trainers every once a week they go through this and, and they walk through the same things every week to you know talk to people and then get people started with how to run a meeting, how to manage participants, how to share your screen. 
Uh, so th there's a lot of things like that that you can do, and it's all free, and, and you just go to the Zoom website, the Zoom uh, support website, and, and sign up for that. Okay. That's very useful. So one of the other things uh, that I'm always curious about is um, sort of my individual settings and, and what I should do with those or how I can best maximize my use with settings. Right, and that's one part that a lot of people don't ever mess with. A lot of people, whenever the software package, they use the, the 5% that they need of, of something to get by, but then there's a whole bunch more that is, right. uh, that's under the surface that people don't a lot of times scratch into. Um, so if you look up here um, in the in the new um, new Zoom app, up in the very top corner is a little. If you have a, a profile picture, it'll be a profile picture of you, but it, it's a little settings tab, and it'll open up some more options for you. Uh, and one thing I just found today that I didn't know about, uh, you can switch to portrait view back to the the, the, the typical looking view on the oh, okay. on the, the Zoom app because it's changed now. A lot of people now have the, the big wide view, and it takes up a lot of real estate. But there is a way to, to switch back to the the classic portrait view. Um, but under this, you can go into settings. Uh, this is where you can also access your your video and your audio. Um, you can you know your chat things here you can you can have different options for things the virtual background that we talked about earlier and recording options too okay and this is a good place to remember where this is at uh, because when you do a local recording and you can't find it yeah that, I mean that's my <laughs> thing I would record something and I'd be like I have no idea where this is yeah so if you go to this recording here it, it tells you where your recordings are being stored at okay um, so it, on, the, on the Mac, it'll open it up there. On a PC, it, it'll go to, it's usually in the, the documents folder. Okay. And if you don't want that, if you want to record the desktop where you're going to re remember it, you can always choose a new location and tell it to store to the, to the desktop, and then you'll be able to find it right away. Okay. So you can choose it where you do that as well. Now, if you don't want to record locally, there's a cloud recording option? Right. And we'll pop into that here in a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, and there are different things too. There's a lot of things that you can play with. Uh, under that same menu there, there is a My Profile. And this is something that a lot of people don't ever get past the Zoom app itself. Uh, whenever you're logged into Zoom and you click on this My Profile, it takes you out to the, the Zoom website. Uh, and it goes to your profile that you have with a pro account. And so on this count, we've set this up as with an AT still, and we put a little picture in there. You can add a picture, you can change it, you can get rid of your picture. But it's a little nice touch to have. If your camera's not on, it shows this on, on your uh, Zoom when you're in a call. Uh, personal meeting ID, we use a lot. And you can choose what number you use for instant meetings or whenever you schedule a meeting. You can set this up to where it's a number you remember. Um, this is our, like our main office line here, but you can put in your cell phone number if you remember it. You could put in, you know, a different number is at least a nine-digit number, um, as long as you can remember it. Right. If you can't remember, it doesn't do you much good anyway. Because, but. But that's the number you share with people to right. get into a meeting. Okay. Correct. And then that also, you can just you know copy and paste a link like this. You can tell somebody to go to this number. You know, go to Zoom. Go to six six zero six two six two three seven six, or you can send them a link. <clears throat> and you can also make a personal URL for it as well to where you can atsu.zoom.us slash my slash and then you can put in whatever as long as somebody else isn't using that same one. So for us, like maybe our email address or something like that would be something that's unique that yeah. we could use. Yeah. Okay. And the ways, there's other ways to link accounts and to, to set up uh, you know, somebody to do your scheduling for you. If you have a, 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 an office assistant that wants to set up meetings for you, there, there's ways to do that as well. It, um, a little bit more of a uh, esoteric thing, so contact us if you need yeah. that. Okay, all right. And that's kind of the, uh, the settings for the uh, profile thing, but then the, also on the side, there's a, a way to check into your meeting settings. And this is where a lot of the, the options are. Okay. And you can 
have whether people have their cameras on or, or how they can connect with the audio. Um, one thing that, well, I'll go through a couple of the options here that we use a lot is uh, join before host, where if you set up a meeting and you invite 10 people and you're not there yet, these other people could possibly pop in there and you kind of talk amongst themselves. They don't just get a screen that says the host isn't here yet. Okay. If you, if you click that off, they're going to get a, a warning to say the host has not joined the meeting, please wait. Okay. Uh, personal meeting ID, this is going back to that number, the personalized number that we talked about. Uh, this means whenever you start a, you just start a, a, an ad hoc meeting, it's going to use that number. Okay. Uh, password, we talked a little bit, Tabitha talked a little bit about they don't use a password, but if you do want a password, you can set up a password to where it's a limited number of people who can get into, and then you have to send that password information to the attendees as well. And that can be handy too if you're having a sensitive discussion and you're using your, your normal personal meeting ID it's, and somebody else could accidentally pop in there. Make sure they don't pop in in the middle of a yeah. bad moment. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So that, that's a way to, to help with security for FERPA or HIPAA issues as well to where you can lock it down to where the person who's coming to your, your uh, one o'clock meeting doesn't pop in on an earlier meeting accidentally. Um, and here's the encryption one for that would work for uh, FERPA, but the, the HIPAA one we have to set up a separate account. Um, the chat and private chat. Uh, a lot of times we like to have a co-host. Uh, if we're doing, especially when we're doing live events, we, we can set somebody else to be uh, where they can moderate as well and, and watch the chats and. and, and and as a host, you can mute people who accidentally have their mics open okay. uh, if they're eating potato chips in, in, a, in a live event, which it's happens important. more yeah. often than you would think. Yeah. Uh, we can mute their mic and, and stop them. So your co-host has the same rights as the host inside of the meeting. So is a live event different than a regular meeting? Uh, no. Okay. Usually not. Uh, it's just we get pulled into doing a lot of campus to campus things and okay. we have a, a speaker and we send out a, a, a Zoom link to everybody on campus, and, and it's good to be able to control what's coming into sure. the classroom because a lot of times you'll have background noise and the, and the yeah. presenter is trying to present. But it, it's the same thing though in your other meetings. If you're presenting, if you're talking, and, and somebody at some location is at home and their dog's barking and it is coming into the meeting, you want to be able to. to Cut that down really quickly. Mute that, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. You can yell at them, which is what most people do. Is like, hey, <laughs> shut off your mic. <laughs> Some of our coordinators work in offices where there's other office people. Uh. So, and if they forget to turn their microphone off, then we, you know, hear the phone ringing at the desk next to them or whatever. So it's nice to be able to just hit a button and shut them off. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, if I can. I can kind of show you that real quick too. I didn't. I kind of glossed over that in the meeting things. Hello, Jean again. Uh, under the participants menu here, if you have multiple participants in there, then you can come in here and, and mute and unmute them. Um, you can mute all or unmute all, and, and there's different things you can do as well. And then you, if there's multiple people in there, you can add them as co-host from there as well. I mean, you can say you can you know, click on them, and, and it'll give you the option to to uh, give, give somebody host rights. If you had to leave or something like that as well, you could do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can mute the camera if they're having a bad yeah. hair day. <laughs> <laughs> Which Jean's having a terrific hair day. <laughs> terrific hair day. And I guess I didn't show a screen share. We talked a little bit about it with Tab, how they, yeah. they, they do that, but inside the meeting, um, if you go into screen share, uh, you can pick what it shares. If you have multiple desktops, you can pick one of the desktops, and you have to kind of use the thumbnail to, to figure out which one you want to show. Uh, there's also a way to do a, a whiteboard, or you can bring in a, a, a devices as well, or you can pick individual options. So if you want, if you had Excel or or PowerPoint running, you can just pick that one particular app to, to share. Um, one thing we ha do encourage people to do, if you're going to be running a, a video in the background, you're gonna, you can show a YouTube video for everybody, 
or a Google Drive video, there's a, a checkbox option down in the very corner there to, to share the computer sound as well. If you don't check that, it, will, it won't bring the, the other audio in from your computer and your screen share. Great, great. All right, and wh what questions? You guys have anything yet or anything from online yet? Okay. No, nothing online, uh, but I am interested, uh, I don't know if it's time or if we can go, to, I'm interested in hearing more about, you talked about local recording, but I'm interested in the cloud recording because I, I, we talked a little bit about this and I think there's a real service there that folks may not be aware of. And the term cloud can be confusing for folks and so maybe this would be something where uh, we can alleviate some of that and help folks understand how, uh, how the cloud could assist them in the recording function anyway. Right. And whenever you, uh, the, the cloud recording, if you think about it, it local recording and cloud recording are, are opposites of each other. Uh, the local recording, is, like I said, it records on your local PC or, or on a laptop, and it puts it on the hard drive. Uh, when you shut down the meeting, it'll churn for a while and, and compress the video, and, and you don't you don't want to shut off your computer at that point because it, it's processing the video and then it'll put a, an mp4 file, a video file on your hard drive okay. so you have it locally. You can then share it with people, you can um, I think share it to Google Drive or you can put it on YouTube if you wanted to or you know put it into a, a course uh, on, on LMS like Canvas but uh, so you want to wait 10 or 15 you want minutes to make, afterwards? Yeah, let's, it'll have a progress bar. Okay. You don't want to just shut the computer off. If you're in a conference room and, and somebody's coming in after you and, and it, it's running, it, it's going to take a while and so you can't shut time. that computer off and you can't log off. So that's one of the downsides of local recording. Um, the uh, the opposite would be the cloud recording. And, and if you think of cloud on anything for you know cloud computing, cloud storage, cloud recording, it's somewhere not here. It, yeah. it's, it's off campus, it, it's on the internet somewhere, and there's a service that has the ability to, to take these files. Um, Google Drive is a cloud service. It, it, the, you can access it from anywhere, you can log in from anywhere, and it's just not here. Okay, okay. So, so that's basically what the cloud is. It's, it's off-premises storage and, and, and software. It, it's shareable just like a local uh, save one would be as well. So. Right. We do have a question um, that came in. What would someone need to do if they wanted to host a webinar? Webinar is a little different animal. Uh, so when you have a regular pro Zoom account, you can connect to 100 different participants at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it could be 200 people in one room, but that counts as one participant if sure. you're only linked in once. Sure. But 100 different locations can come into it for a normal Zoom account. And that gives you back and forth uh, communication and which is good and can be bad uh, like <laughs> right, if, right. if some potato chips right yeah so <laughs> the uh, webinar kind of takes that and makes it more of a for a presentation to where you're you're wanting to contact a bunch of people but you're presenting and, and they can type back a question but they can't speak you're not getting the audio back from the, them um, and to do that with our Zoom licensing we have now, we have a, a limited number of webinar accounts. Uh, I think we have five total. And what we've been doing is kind of checking them out to people. So if you know next week you want to run a webinar, we'll give you the, the webinar superpowers. And you can then set up a webinar. We can help kind of walk you through it. But then you, you can go out to 500 people uh, with the webinar. Do you get a cape with the webinar superpowers? I think, I think we've got a cape, we've got a, a Got a Darth Vader helmet. Too. Darth Vader helmet. Okay, yeah, so I like it. The little, little evil, cape, evil so. side to it. All right. I like that. Um, I have another question that came in. Uh, there are statistics available within Zoom. How are those used? Uh, can you provide some examples of how statistics can be useful for folks? Um, there's ways to, after a call, figure out who was in the call, uh, how long they were in the call, and you know you can download the chat afterwards as well. Um, I have the admin superpower, so I, <laughs> I, I, I can see a lot of what goes on in, in meetings, um, but uh, I guess I'd need to know more of what they needed to know. But I mean, you can afterwards figure out who was in your call, and so if I go to the, this profile and I go to my meetings, I can look at my previous meetings and, and see 
you know, like we had a Martin Luther King thing here. Um, so you can see who was in there. You can see some of that who was in here um, and, and, and what the settings were. Um, well, Tabitha, is this something that you ever use? With right, we use the attendance report uh, to know which coordinators or which deans attended each meeting. It's, uh, they're highly encouraged to attend the meeting so that we can share information and keep everybody up to date. So that's helpful in the doing the minutes of the meeting and we have the attendance of who was, atten who was in attendance. Okay, so use it for who, who was there and who wasn't right. there. And, and do you share your meet, do you record your meetings and share them afterwards? Yes, okay. we record the meetings and share them through the Google Drive. Through your Google Drive, okay, excellent, excellent. And I guess along with talking about uh, doing the meeting minutes, uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit with the cloud recording. Um, if you go into your meeting settings, you can allow cloud recordings. You can do automatic recordings too, where it automatically records for your meetings. Um, but audio transcript is a checkbox there for the cloud recording. It doesn't work on the local recording, but on the cloud recording, you can set it up to have a transcript of the recording. Okay. And it'll take, and it'll do its best job at, at, at converting speech to text. And then when you get your cloud recording, it'll be along the, uh, the side there of the cloud recording. So if you had someone that was expected to take minutes for a meeting or something like right. that, that it's could not be gonna be really, perfect, right. but it's gonna give you a good idea. And especially if, if people have headsets on and, and they're not at the back of the room yelling at somebody else, <laughs> um, it does a better job, um, and I might have to. That's a really nice feature that it would it will just do that. And, and from what I understand, it's a it's pretty reliable um, in terms of especially with the headsets. And it so. doesn't work for like Americans with Disabilities Act level of uh, reliability, um, but it gets you at least part way there if you need to take minutes or refer back. Right. And can't remember who said what or when it was said. Okay. And I'll have to log into mine to, to kind of go to show you that as well. So in the cloud recordings here, I've got some Canvas trainings that we did. Um, and if you have a, a cloud recording, there's a way to get a shareable link to share it with people where they can watch it online or you can download it and, and put it someplace else. But uh, this is a, an audio transcript one to where as, as the people talk and, and they're going through a uh, presentation, it will go along with your transcript and you can also, it's searchable as well. And then it looked like when you were flashing over there, a little edit button yeah, showed up. Yeah, there's so ways for uh, the host to edit it as well. So if, if you're using this in a classroom and you're using Mario Cardio infarction or something like that, <laughs> so <laughs> medical terms, and, and it, it's probably gonna mangle that. Yeah. But then you can go back and later and, and go through and, and uh, and edit that text if, if you're the owner of the video, if you're the host of the video. Okay, all right, very nice, very nice. So, but it's, my, like I said, probably a good, better use of it is to take meeting minutes and, and being able to recall what was said. And then if you, you know, if you're looking for, um, like uh, I see Chelsea okay. is, a, is a name in there. Yeah, I can search for that and it'll highlight wherever that comes up. Very good. Well, we're kind of running, uh, running out of time here. This has been very informative and very helpful. Um, before we sign off here, I, I want to ask uh, Dean or Tabitha, do you have any last uh, moments of wisdom or, or thoughts for our, for our audience? I would say if you're using um, conferencing, just phone calls, weekly phone calls, or anything on a regular basis, and you're not using Zoom, that you should be using Zoom. It's very user-friendly. Um, it has a personal touch where you're able to see each other face to face. You can record it, you can uh, have the transcription. So it's just, it's a great tool that ATSU has to offer. Right, and, and ATSU does offer this free of charge to all employees. Um, we have licenses for everybody on campus plus some. Okay. Um, so if you don't have a Zoom Pro account, you want one, it's free of charge to your department. Uh, it, it's covered by one license that, they, that ITS pays for each year, and we'll get you set up. Just let us know at, at service.atsu.edu. All right. Well, I want to thank Tabitha and Dean for joining us and sharing a lot of great wisdom about Zoom and 
and sort of the history of video conferencing here at ATSU. I want to thank you for joining in today. Um, if you uh, missed something or want to share this recording with someone, please go visit our YouTube page. And that it's at the bottom of the page right there. And you can see this video again or share it with a friend. Um, have a great day and enjoy the rest of your week here at ATSU.